فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد we are in the explanation of the kitab at tibyan uh, li'adab hamalat al-quran written by am li'adab hamalat al-quran written by al-allama al-imam al-mujtahid muhyiddin abi zakariya yahya ibn sharaf al-nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala we started the fifth chapter and we are now in the first fasl first unit in the fifth chapter the author says rahimahullah fi al kalam an khatm al quran fi muddat muayyana yanbaghi an yuhafiz ala tilawatihi wa yuktira minha wa kana lis salaf radiyallahu anhum adat mukhtalifatun fi qadr ma yakhtimuna fi fa rawa ibn abi dawud an ba'd al salaf annahum kanu yakhtimuna fi kulli shahrayn khatmatan wahida وعن بعضهم في كل شهر ختمة وعن بعضهم في كل عشر ليال وعن بعضهم وعن بعضهم في كل ثمان ليال وعن الأكثرين في كل سبع ليال وعن بعضهم في كل ست وعن بعضهم في كل خمس وعن بعضهم في كل أربع وعن كثيرين في كل ثلاث وعن بعضهم في كل ليلتين وعن كثير في كل في كل يوم وليلة ختمة ومنهم من كان يختم في كل يوم وليلة ختمتين ومنهم من كان يختم ثلاثة وختم بعضهم ثمان ختمات أربعا أربعا في الليل وأربعا في النهار فمن الذين كانوا يختمون ختمة في الليل واليوم عثمان بن عفان وتميم الدار وسعيد بن جبير ومجاهد بن جبر والشافعي وآخرون رضي الله عنهم ومن الذين كانوا يختمون ثلاث ختمات سليم, سليم بن عثر رضي الله عنه قاضي مصر في خلافة معاوية رضي الله عنه قاضي مصر في خلافة معاوية رضي الله عنه وقاص أهل مصر فروى أبو بكر بن أبي داود أنه كان يختم في في الليل أنه كان يختم في الليلة ثلاث ختمات وروى أبو بكر الكندي في كتابه في قضاة مصر أنه كان يختم في الليلة أربع ختمات وقال الشيخ الصالح الإمام أبو وقال الشيخ الصالح الإمام أبو عبد الرحمن السلمي رضي الله عنه سمعت الشيخ أبا عثمان المغربي رضي الله عنه يقول كان ابن الكاتب رضي الله عنه يختم بالنهار أربع ختمات وبالليل أربع ختمات وهذا أكثر ما بلغنا في اليوم والليلة وروى السيد الجليل أحمد الدورقي بإسناده عن منصور بن زادان من عباد التابعين رضي الله عنهم أنه كان يختم القرآن فيما بين الظهر والعصر ويختمه أيضا فيما بين المغرب والعشاء ويختمه فيما بين المغرب والعشاء في رمضان ختمتين وشيئا وكانوا يؤخرون العشاء في رمضان إلى أن, إلى أن يمضي ربع الليل وروى ابن أبي داود بإسناده الصحيح أن مجاهدا كان يختم القرآن في رمضان فيما بين المغرب والعشاء وعن منصور قال كان علي الأزدئي
كان علي الأزدي يختم فيما بين المغرب والعشاء كل ليلة من رمضان وعن إبراهيم بن سعد كان أبي يحتبي فيما يحل حب حبوته حبوته حتى يختم القرآن بوث ويجيك زين وأما الذين ختموا القرآن في كل ركعة فلا يحصون لكثرتهم فمن المتقدمين عثمان بن عفان وتميم الداري وسعيد بن جبير وسعيد بن جبير ختمه في ركعة في الكعبة وأما الذين ختموا في الأسبوع مرة فكثيرون نقل نقل فكثيرون نقل عن عثمان بن عفان وعبد الله بن مسعود وزيد بن ثابت وأبي بن كعب وأبي بن كعب رضي الله عنهم وعن جماعة من التابعين كعبد الرحمن بن زيد وعلقمة وإبراهيم رحمهم الله تعالى والاختيار أن ذلك يختلف باختلاف الأشخاص فمن كان يظهر له بدقيق الفكر لطائف معارف فليقتصر على قدر ما يحصل فليقتصر على قدر يحصل له كمال فهم ما ما يقرأه وكذا من لا وكذا من كان مشغولا بنشر العلم أو غيره من مهمات الدين ومصالح المسلمين العامة فليقتصر على قدر لا يحصل بسببه إخلال ما هو مرصد له وإن لم يكن من هؤلاء المذكورين فليستكثر ما أمكن من غير خروج إلى حد الملل والهذرة وقد كره جماعة من المتقدمين ختمة في يوم وليلة ويدل عليه الحديث الصحيح عن عبد الرحمن بن عمرو بن العاص رضي الله عنه ما قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يفقه من قرأ القرآن في أقل من ثلاث رواه أبو داود والترمذي والنسائي وغيرهم قال الترمذي حديث حسن صحيح والله أعلم وأما وقت الابتداء والختم لمن يختم في الأسبوع فقد روى ابن أبي داود أن عثمان بن عفان رضي الله عنه كان يفتتح القرآن ليلة. كان يفتتح القرآن ليلة الجمعة ويختمه ليلة الخميس وقال الإمام أبو حامد الغزالي رحمه الله في إحياء علوم الدين الأفضل أن يختم ختمة بالليل وختمة بالنهار ويجعل ختمة النهار يوم الاثنين في ركعتي الفجر أو بعدهما ويجعل ختمة الليل ختمة الجمعة في ركعتي المغرب أو بعدهما ليستقبل أول النهار وآخرة وروى ابن أبي داود عن عمرو بن مرة التابعي قال كانوا يحبون كانوا يحبون أن يختم القرآن من أول الليل أو من أول النهار وعن طلحة بن مصرف التابعي الجليل قال من ختم القرآن أية ساعات كانت من النهار صلت عليه الملائكة حتى يمسي وآية ساعة كانت من الليل صلت عليه الملائكة حتى يصبح وعن مجاهد, وعن مجاهد نحوه وروى الدارمي في مسنده بإسناد عن سعد بن أبي وقاص رضي الله عنه قال إذا وافق ختم القرآن أول الليل صلت عليه الملائكة حتى يصبح وإن وافق ختمه آخر الليل صلت عليه الملائكة حتى يمسي قال الدارمي هذا حديث عن سعد وعن حبيب بن أبي ثابت التابعي أنه كان يختم قبل الركوع قال ابن أبي داود وكذا قال أحمد بن حنبل رحمه الله تعالى وفي هذا الفصل بقايا ستأتي في الباب الآتي إن شاء الله تعالى Section. A student should strive to recite regularly and as much as possible. The pious predecessors varied in the period of time within which they would complete their recitation of the Qur'an. Ibn Abi Dawood narrated that, Ibn Abi Dawood narrated that of the pious predecessors, may Allah have mercy on them, were those who would complete the recitation of the entire Qur'an every three months. Here the author, rahimahullah, he starts and he just talks about a very important topic which is what is required from an individual. 
ينبغي أن يحافظ على تلاوته. That a person he should safeguard and make sure that he attains and he comes with reciting the Quran regularly and also increasing in the amount that he recites. The pious predecessors, Salafu Hadi Al Ummah, the great noble generation, the three golden generation, they had different types of norms. Adat Mukhtalifa, their norms were different. But all of them had one thing in common, which is that they were excessive in the recitation of the Quran. Even though there were different amounts in which they would recite with, what they had in common is that they all were in regular relationship or they regularly recited the Quran and they were very close to the recitation of the Quran. The amount in which each one would read with would be different. And the author now is going to bring the different amounts that each person would read with. So he says, Farawa ibn Abi Dawood. Ibn Abi Dawood here is Abu Bakr ibn Abi Dawood. Abu Bakr ibn Abi Dawood is the one who wrote the Ha'iyah. The author of the Ha'iyah, Mandumatul Ha'iyah, the Aqidah book, is him. And he's the son of the noble scholar Abu Dawood, Sijistani rahimahullah, the author of the Sunan. That's his son. And these statements that he's getting from him, he's getting it from the Kitab Al-Masahif that he authored. He has a book called Al-Masahif, where he talks about many matters related to the Quran. And I think, inshallah ta'ala, in the near future, in the near future, it's a book that we're going to cover, inshallah. And it's a book that the Orientalists used to prove that the Quran is not preserved. They use that kind of works. They play with narrations and they bring statements here and there. And one of the earliest people who actually worked on that book was, the, uh, was an orientalist who edited that book from its manuscript version and turned it out into a hard copy was an orientalist. So the ulama that came after, they refuted him in the, uh, how he tried to tamper with the book. Now. Ibn Abi Dawood narrated that, that of the pious predecessors, may Allah have mercy on them, were those who would complete the recitation of the entire Quran every two months. So some of them, what they would do is, and that's the first group now, every two months, one time they'll finish the Quran, over and done with. So that's, that's every two months. So the first month they would read 15 Jews, and the second month they will read the remaining 15 Jews. Now, While others would complete it every month. Some would finish it every month. So they would read every single day one Jews. The Quran is 30 Jews. So they read a Jews a day. That's one group of the Salaf. Others every 10 nights. And some, some of them were every 10 nights. Some of them were Ibn Hajar brings in his kitab Nata'iju al-Afqar Rahimahullahu ta'ala Akhraj Ibn Abi Dawood Bi sanadi al-layyinin An al-Hasan al-Basri Anna wa kana yakra'u al-Qur'ana Fi kulli ashri layani marrah That the person who would read Every ten days was who? Every ten days Was Hasan al-Basri Rahimahullah From the Ayman al-Salaf who used to No. And some every eight nights. Some would finish every every eight nights. Half of the Hajar brings it in his Nataj of Kara that Ibn Abi Dawood mentions from Ubay ibn Ka'b radiallahu anhu that he said, Iqra'ul Quran fi kulli thamanin. Ubay said, read the Quran in every eight days. So he was known for Ubay every eight days he would finish the Quran. Ubay, the noble companion. Naam. Some would complete it every seven nights. So the ones who would finish it every seven nights is a Sanid Sahih, authentic chains which brought from uh, Uthman would do that. Wa Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, wa Tamib ibn Awsin al Dari, radiallahu anhu, wa Abdul Rahman ibn Zaydin, wa Al Qamat ibn Qaysin, wa Masru ibn al Ajda' that they used to finish every seven days. And there is a narration that has come from the Prophet regarding finishing the Quran every seven, hey? Others every five, sorry, others every six nights. 
And another group, where they would finish it every... From those who would do that is Al-Aswad ibn Yazid. He used to finish every... Every six... Every six nights. Abu Ubaid Qasim ibn Salam brings in his kitab Fadail al-Qur'an through the chain of Ibrahim al-Nakha'iy rahimahullahu ta'ala. Others every five nights. Some would finish every five nights, such as Alqama. He would also finish every five, five nights. And he used to dislike, as Ibn Abi Dawood mentions, he used to dislike Alqama for the Qur'an to be read in less than five nights. Kana Alqama yakrahu an yukhtama. He used to dislike that the Qur'an would be finished fi aqalli min khamsin, less than five. Others every four nights. Another group would finish the Qur'an every four nights. From those who would do is Abu Darda. Abu Darda would finish the Qur'an every four nights. Abu Darda was done with the Qur'an and its recitation. Others every three nights. Another group were the ones who would finish the recitation of the Qur'an every three nights. وَلِذَلِكَ لِذَا حَدِيثَ حَافِظُ بْنَ حَجَرْ بِنْ زَنِيزَ نَتَائِجُ الْأَفْقَارِ Abu Umayyad Qasim Sallam Fadail Al-Qur'an that Sa'ad ibn Mundir Al-Ansari he said to the Prophet of Allah أَأَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنَ فِي ثَلَاثٍ Shall I read the Qur'an in three? The Prophet said to him نَعَمْ إِنْ إِسْتَطَعْتَ Yes, if you're able to. So he came to the Messenger Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sa'ad ibn Mundir Al-Ansari he came to the Messenger Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said Ya Rasulullah Shall I read the Qur'an and I, shall I finish it in three? The messenger said to him, yes, if you're able to. Naam. Others every two nights. Now, other, there were other scholars who used to finish the Qur'an in what? Two nights. And from them is um, Sa'id ibn Jubair. Sa'id ibn Jubair also used to finish the Qur'an in three night, two nights. Also, Sa'ad ibn Ibrahim ibn Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, his grandson. He used to finish in two. Ata ibn Sa'ib. He used to also finish in two nights. Naam. Others every night. And there were some who used to always finish. They would finish within 24 hours, they would finish one khatmah. So they would have. In the month, they would finish the Qur'an 30 times. Every day, one time. And from those who used to do that, uh, Abdullah ibn Zubair. Abdullah ibn Zubair would finish the Qur'an every night, he would finish it once. Also, Umar ibn Hussein, he used to finish the Qur'an day and night, he would, 24 hours he would finish he would finish, what do you call it? Uh, he would finish uh, uh, one time. But what you have to realize is Abdullah ibn Zubair was not day and night. He would only do that all in one night. In his Qiyam al-Layl, in his Qiyam, he would finish it all. And others still would complete it twice and even three times a day. Some of them would finish it twice. Some of them would finish it twice. And from those who would finish it twice is Yaqub ibn Yusuf ibn Ziyad. He used to finish the Quran fil yawmi marratayn twice. He'd finish it. Rahimahullahu ta rahimahumullahu jami'an. He'd finish the Quran twice. Naam. And even three times a day. Some would finish three times a day. Naam. It is even narrated that someone can complete the Qur'an eight times a day. Naam. Four times during the day and four times during the night. There were some who did that. Four times, four times a day and four at night time. Eight times. Nuqila an ba'dihim. Naam. Among those who would complete the Qur'an every night were Uthman ibn Affan, Tamim al-Dari, Sa'id ibn Jubair, Mujahid ibn al shafii and others. Naam. Among those who complete the recitation of the Qur'an three times a night, Hussain ibn Utr, 
the Grand Judge of Egypt during the reign of Muawiyah radiallahu an, Abu Bakr ibn Abi Dawood narrated that he, Sulaim, would recite the whole Quran three times a night. Naam, this is all in the Qiyam. Abu Umar al-Kindi, who narrated in his book, The Judges of Egypt. This is not Ramadan, by the way. Abu Umar al-Kindi, who narrated in his book, The Judges of Egypt, that Sulaim would recite the entire Quran up to four times a night. This is the Qadi, he's a judge. Oh, yeah? The pious Sheikh Abu Abdul Rahman al Sulaymi may Allah have mercy on him. Abdul Rahman al Sulaymi, Sulaymi. Abu Abdul Rahman al Sulaymi may Allah have mercy on him. Once said, I heard Sheikh Abu Uthman al Maghribi say, saying Ibn Ibn al Katib used to recite the whole Quran four times during the day and four times during the night. This is not Abdul Rahman al Sulaymi, Abdul Rahman al Sulaymi, Abdul Rahman al Habib. No, this is the Sufi one, Abdul Rahman al Sulaymi here. <coughs> He's in the Kitab al Tabaqat al Sufiya. Now, he narrates from that Abu Uthman al-Maghribi radiallahu anhu, he used to say, كان ابن الكاتب رضي الله تعالى عنه يختم بالنهاي أربع خاتمات. He would do what? Four. And then four at night time. This is the 80s telling you, right? This is the most we have ever heard regarding the frequency of any man's recitation of the Quran. There's no one who beat eight. That's the largest number. Huh? That has been transmitted to us. When it makes that noise, to switch off your microphone. The Honorable Ahmed al-Dawrati Ad narrates with his chain of narration that Mansoor ibn Zadan, one of the devout worshippers and the pious predecessors, used to recite the entire Quran between Dhuhr and Asr and recite it all again between Maghrib and Isha. So it's mentioned that Sayyid al-Jaleel Ahmed al-Dawraki, the author brings from him that from Mansoor ibn uh, Zadan, was from the Ubad of the Tabi'een, the worshippers of the Tabi'een, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, he used to read and complete the Quran between Dhuhr and Maghrib, uh, sorry, Dhuhr and Asr. And then he would sit again, and then he would finish again between Maghrib and Isha. And then he would complete it between Maghrib and Isha in Ramadan twice. So if it was a Ramadan, he would do once. And if it was a Ramadan, he would make it twice between Maghrib and Isha. During Ramadan, when they would delay the Isha until the first quarter of the night passed, he would recite the entire Quran between Maghrib and Isha twice, and even begin a third recitation. No. Ibn Abi Dawood narrates with an authentic chain of narration that Mujahid used to recite the entire Quran between Maghrib and Isha every night of Ramadan. So this is when Ramadan entered, Mujahid used to finish the Quran في ما بين المغرب والعشاء. But the, the, the time between the two of them it was very, it was pushed apart. Naam. Mansoor narrates that Ali, the Ali al-Azadi would also complete the entire Quran between Maghrib and Isha every night of Ramadan. Ibrahim ibn Sa'ad once said, my father would sit with his legs stretched in front of him and would remain in that position without getting up until he had recited the entire Quran. So his father would sit in that particular position, wouldn't move from that position, and finish the Quran like that. Naam. Those who are known to recite the entire Quran in a single rak'ah but innumerable. Some of them would only pray the whole Quran in one rak'ah, one qiyam. Allahu Akbar, the whole Quran. From them was who? <coughs> and among them were Uthman ibn Affan, Tamim al Dari, al Sa'id ibn Jubayr. They would read the Quran, all of them, in one qiyam, one stand. They would start from Surah to Baqarah, Surah to Nas. All of that in one stand. Then they will second rak'ah, they will start from the beginning again. So all of that was in their qiyam, in their, will, in their, in their what you call it, standing. And Sa'id ibn Jubayr, who would recite the entire Qur'an in every rak'ah, he, he prayed inside the Kaaba. That's what he would do. Sa'id ibn, Sa'id ibn, Sa'id ibn Jubayr, right? Every single rak'ah in his qiyam would finish the Qur'an. So Salaf, what you tend to feel, realize from them is that their prayer was long. The number was very little. It wasn't necessarily the 20 something you see. Theirs was short, longer. Tool and the qiyam and the effort and the way it was prayed. So what's needed is that a person's salah is lengthy than to focus on the amount of rak'at that you pray. And brothers, this is why they have what? Bihad artafa al aqawm. They were lifted because of this. They were lifted because of this. Allah raised them ranks. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised them status, positions, because their khalawat, their inner internal affairs, and their relationship with the book of Allah was unprecedented. How many of us can actually say that we sat down and we even opened the Mus'haf and looked at it? How many of us can even say within a day we read one page? With all honesty. How many of us has even read half a page? When you look at theirs, they, their recitation of the Quran and their reading of the Quran was we're talking about a period of 10 to 15, 20, some of them 40 years of consistency of doing this. Consistency. That's how they were. Like Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and Zayd ibn Thabit and Ubay ibn Ka'b and all of them when you and the Tabi'een and how they were with the Quran. They were Ahlul Quran, the people of the Quran. Those who would recite those who would recite the entire Quran every week are also many. Among them were Uthman ibn Affan, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Zayd ibn Thabit, Ubay ibn Ka'b, and other and others amongst the pious predecessors, such as Abdurrahman ibn Yazid, Al Qama and Ibrahim, may Allah have mercy on them. Abdurrahman ibn Mas'ud, what did Abdullah ibn Mas'ud sorry say? مَا مِنْ آيَةٍ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ Forget the memorization and the, and the hifz of the Qur'an. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud swore by Allah. There is not an ayah in the Qur'an. There is not a verse in the Qur'an. إِلَّا وَأَنَا أَعْلَمُ أَيْنَ نَزَلَتْ I know where it came down on. Forget the hifz and the wording of it. I know where it came down on. أَيْنَ where, where? Mecca, Medina, Mecca. Where in Mecca? I can tell you. وَمَتَى نَزَلَتْ I can tell you what time it came down. Was it in the morning? Was it in the evening? Was it in the afternoon? I can tell you where it was. I can tell you who it came down on. Who was the reason why this ayah came down on? Then he goes on to say, If I was to know anyone on the face of this earth today that knew more the book of Allah than me and I could reach them through my riding beast, Wallahi, I would go to them. But I have no knowledge of anyone who is like that. Anyone who has that knowledge of the Quran like that in which I can go to and take it from. So the hifz of the Quran wasn't just mujarrad al fad they just didn't just memorize the wordings. They actually knew the meaning of the Quran. They knew the meaning of the, they knew the meaning of the Quran. Now, The most appropriate of all these different methods will depend on the individual. Those who are able to discover the tacit and inferred me and inferred meanings only through deep contemplation should limit themselves to reciting only an amount would allow them to contemplate such meanings. So the author now goes into a a topic called, I read the Quran. I want to read the Quran. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Which was better? That I finish the recitation of the Quran and I get the reward of... Switch off. That I get the reward of um, the letters that I read. Or should I... Um, contemplate and ponder over the Quran and read slow and not read much but I ponder on which one's better this is what the author now goes into the mas'ala of what the pondering of the Quran and thinking over it when it or what about reading more and reciting a lot and also, these salaf of the ummah, how should one be like regarding their Quran? Are they all going to be? Are we all going to be like Uthman, who read everything in one qiyam, Abdullah ibn Saud and Sayyid ibn Jubair and Mujahid and the likes of them? How should we be like? So he gives you a beneficial advice, Al Imam An Nawawiyu, rahimahullah taala. Naam. Likewise, those who busy themselves with teaching as well as other religious tasks or affairs that bring benefit to the Muslim community should also limit themselves to whatever would allow them to carry out their responsibilities in the manner required. The author here mentions that this differs from one person to another. Anybody who feels that they want to ponder on the Quran and they want to think over the Quran and the fact that they're going to read fast 
will get in the way of that he said that this generally speaking is better that they read slow then لأن ابن عثمان رضي الله عنه عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله تعالى عنه all of them when they were reading the Quran and they were finishing it very frequently they weren't losing the pondering they still weren't losing the pondering but if you feel like I am the author rahimahullah he says this because it differs from person to person that you as an individual feel like this is going to get in the way then inshallah ta'ala read slow also there's another person who's busy teaching spreading knowledge or he's standing up for other important Islamic duties so for example he's the leader of the Muslim country okay or he's doing something that the ummah are benefiting from and they're reaping its fruits so he says فَلْيَخْتَصِرْ عَلَىٰ قَدْرِ فَلْيَقْتَصِرْ عَلَىٰ قَدْرٍ لَا يَحْصُلُ بِسَبَبِ إِخْلَالٌ بِمَا هُوَ مَرْصَدُ اللَّهِ Read an amount from the Quran that won't get in the way of your the task that you're doing for the Ummah. So the one who's doing nothing for the Ummah, he can just sit there and read the Quran more. But the one who's standing up, he's spreading knowledge, he's teaching, he's educating, he's what, what, what he's doing a lot, he we will say to him, Okay, take some of them. Because what we want you not to get caught up is reading too much too much Quran so much so that it gets in the way of your natural ilm that is spreading the knowledge or it gets in the way of you leading the Muslims correctly and giving them justice and stuff like that if however one has more time on his hands and is able to understand more fully the meanings of the Quran without limiting himself to a smaller portion then he should increase the amount he recites as long as he does not exceed the limits to that which will make him bored or to the extent that he will wind up mumbling the Quran. The author here now goes into anyone who isn't busy with spreading knowledge and he's not standing up min muhimmati deen wa masalih al-muslimin al ammah He's not standing up for that which benefits the ummah. He's just, as you'd say, he's soloing his life. He's doing everything by himself. That individual the Shaykh Rahimahullah, he says, he should, what do you call it? فَلْيَسْتَكْثِرْ Increase. مَا أَمْكَنَوْا As much as you can. If you're not busy with teaching the people, you're not busy running, governing, governing the Muslims, you've got free time, go sit down and read the Quran as much. As much so, مِنْ غَيْرِ خُرُوجٍ إِلَى حَدِّ الْمَلَلِي That your recitation should not take you to what? That you become bored. And also, it's don't read as much as you, you do what's known as Hadrama. Hadrama means Sur'atul Kalamul Khafi. That you read in the Quran, you don't even know what you're saying now, you're mumbling. You're mumbling. That you don't know what you're saying, you don't know what's coming out of your mouth. This, in this situation, the author says, not as much as that. Naam. Among the pious predecessors were those who disliked that the entire Quran should be recited in a single day and night. Some, when the author says, وَقَدْ كَرِهَ جَمَاعَةٌ كَرِهَ here does not mean disliked. Oh, see the just translation what he says to you? The word كَرِهَ here for the Salaf, it doesn't mean disliked, it means haram. Some of them story haram to read the Quran in one day and one night. They saw haram. Some of the early generation, they used to see a haram. Naam. Those who held this opinion used as evidence the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, may Allah be pleased with him, who said that the messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, whoever recites the entire Quran in less than three days will not comprehend it. Narrated by Abu Da'ud, Al-Tirmidhi, and Nasa'i, and others narrated this hadith, and it was classified as Hassan al-Sahih by Al-Tirmidhi and Allah not best. The Prophet sallallahu hadith is what they used. When the Prophet said to Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Asr, لا يفقه من قرأ القرآن في أقل بثلاث He has not understood. He has not. لا يفقه. He won't understand. من قرأ القرآن, the one who reads the Quran, في أقل بثلاث in less than three. So this is the hadith that they held on to, to say that it's not permissible. نعم. As 
with regards to the starting time and finishing time for he who seeks to recite the entire Quran in a week, Ibn Abi Dawood narrated with his chain of narration that Uthman ibn Affan recited his, or he started his recitation on Friday nights and completed it on Thursday nights. Mm. The author, Rahimahullah, here he brings um, the one who would f the time to start and the time to finish. The one who wants to finish in a week, how he would do it. So if you now want to read a whole week, when do you start? And when do you finish? And Uthman radiallahu anhu, what did he do? He started on a, Saturday, a Friday night. Friday night is when? Huh? It's Thursday night in English. We call it Thursday night. Friday night is the night is when tomorrow, Friday is coming in. Like it was what? It's Thursday night, tomorrow is Jum'ah. That's when he started. Remember in the Muslim world, the night comes first and the day comes after. We believe what? The day comes first. صح? And the night is what? It's after. They don't believe that it's the opposite. The point being though, that Uthman ibn Affan, Laylat al Jum'a, the day Jum'a is coming in, he would start. And he would finish on Wednesday night. When Thursday is coming in. He would go far like that, and he would finish. He would have finished. Rahimahullah Ta'ala. So the way he used to break it down, as Ibn Hajar mentioned, Uthman ibn Affan كان يفتتح القرآن ليلة الجمعة بالبقرة he would start to بقرة إلى سورة المائدة On Saturday night he would then read أنعام إلى هود And then Sunday night he would then read Yusuf إلى مريم and then the Monday night he would read طاها إلى طاسي ميم Surah Qasas. And then he would read after, next day he would read uh, Surah Ankabut ila Surah Al-Sad. And, and then the next day after that he would read Surah Al-Zubar ila Surah Al-Rahman. And then from Surah Al-Rahman he would finish till the night of Khamis he would finish the Quran, all of it. In his book al ihya Imam Abu Hamid al zazari said it is better that the reciter alternate between completing the Qur'an at night and during the day. Here uh, the author brings the statement of Abu Hamid al ghazali rahimahullah. In his book ihya Ulum al-Din. His book ihya Ulum al-Din. Abu Hamid al ghazali rahimahullah said al-afdalu an yakhtima khatmatan bil-layli. What is recommended is that the person completes one at night and once at daytime. Naam. On the occasions where he completes the Quran by day, he should strive to complete it on one day during the two rak'ahs preceding the Fajr prayer or after that. So when you're finishing your day recitation, try to make it on Monday in the rak'atay al-Fajr, the two rak'ah Fajr, or what's after it. While, while the time he completes the Qur'an by night should preferably be on a Friday during the two rak'ahs after moderate prayers or after that. So try to make it, when it's night time that you're praying, try to make your recitation uh, at night time to make it rak'atay al-fajr, uh, rak'atay al-maghrib, the sunnah of maghrib, or after it. The reason he wants from it is this, why? in order that he may welcome the beginning of the day and its end having recited the entire Qur'an. So the way you should try to do it is, if you read it for the Sunnah of Fajr, you've started your day with a fresh Qur'an, you've started your day bright. That's daytime. And at night time, if you do it for the, you pray Maghrib, and then you pray a two rak'ah Sunnah, and you what? You read the, the, in the two rak'ah of Maghrib, the whole Qur'an again, You've now faced your night with another complete recitation of the Quran. So you've now got a Quran for the day and you have a Quran for the night. 
Naam. So the, with your night and day now, is two, you've got two fresh Qur'ans. Naam.